Well, hold on to your seats. This is JD. This is Dealing with the Devils. Jack has the night off, and we just saw why Duke is going to be vulnerable in the NCAA, not to mention the ACC tournament, as Duke took their five-game win streak into Virginia Tech, winning most of the game, although not playing well, and coming up short in the final second, 64-63. A shocker. Let's go through the starting lineup and break it down for you. Grayson Allen shot six for 18. He was looking for the shot. He did finish with 22 points and no help anywhere. That's right. Wendell Carter with five points and eight rebounds, three turnovers and lost most of the night. He really didn't know where he was on the field. Mo Bags, 12 points, seven rebounds, again out of position. Both bigs really out of sorts, not understanding any kind of flow there. And while they didn't start Trey Duval with good reason, he had four personal fouls, seven points coming off the bench, Three turnovers, two assists. Trey, who is it? Duval. You got to ask yourself, how is this guy ranked the number one point guard in the country after game after game where he has been unable to control the flow of the game? And this was a key piece for Duke. And we're looking at um, Duval coming off the bench thinking this was going to help him. And He really just didn't have much of a game there at all. Alex O'Connell contributed three points off the bench. Marquise Bolden, actually not, um, you know, another pretty good game for Marquise. He had four rebounds, four assists, and two points. But actually, his presence was felt on the court. He had a nice block. Um, But you got to wonder... Duke played a nice 10 minutes in the beginning of the game. At one point, had extended their lead to 14 points and then disappeared in the second half of the first half and then disappeared. I don't think they had a field goal for seven minutes going down the stretch. And this was truly a disappointing loss for Duke and the inability for them to pull it together at this time of year Even though this was an away game for them, they should have been able to take them down and have another win. And this would have been six in a row going into the North Carolina game. And this was not a case, folks. This was not a case of Duke looking ahead. This was just another example of how they don't have a flow on the court. And this has got to be as perplexing to this announcer JD as it is to Coach K because he can't find the right formula on that court. And without a true point guard out there, these guys often look lost. And the way that both bigs played tonight, normally we're here talking about how they combined for at least, you know, a 20-20. And tonight, both bigs combined for a total of 17 points and 15 rebounds. This is just not the way this team was playing in the beginning of the year. Um, Although, you know, the five wins, I'll say a lot of those wins came against teams that you thought they would win, and hence why I I felt they would run the table towards the end of the season. And yet, you know, tonight they just went cold for long stretches. And I, I just don't recall a Duke team committing, you know, this number of turnovers. They had 18 turnovers this game. 18 turnovers. I mean, this is not a typical Duke team where, you know, players just don't know where they're, you know, supposed to be. Virginia Tech only had 12. Um, Four of their starters, Blackshear, Robinson, Bibbs, and Alexander, all in double digits for them. It was a nice effort, and Justin Robinson, man, can that guy motor down a court. And I will say this about, you know, Justin and about a lot of other point guards um, to have seen uh, Trey Duval ranked as the number one point guard in the country, at, you know, among the recruits. Justin wasn't, but I, I realized he'd been playing already. But you really have to wonder on a depth chart, 
If a team's looking for a point guard and traded Val is ready to jump to the NBA, who is going to draft him? He does not have a good sense of the court. His shot selection isn't great. His defense is weak at most. And you got to un- wonder, where is that going to put Duke as we're this time of year? I mean, this is when it's all got to come together. And I admit that if, you know, one basket the other way and Duke wins the game, I would have been, you know, yelling here that Duke had eked out a, you know, 63-62 victory, but I would have been equally critical of the way in which they performed tonight. And I don't understand why Coach K just doesn't have a better handle on this. They can get away with this, you know, the last five victories against teams that are undermanned, undersized, don't really have the, the strength. But once it's tournament time, you're going to see this is exactly how they're going to lose or the other way they're going to lose is in that zone, which is being designed to try to cover up some of their defensive faults, there are going to be a lot of opportunities for three-pointers, and they're going to come up against a team that's going to shoot like 10 for 12 from three-point range, and Duke's not going to have an answer for that. You would have thought that what they could have done here tonight was to try to force the ball down low to both bigs, but Bagley is consistently setting up at the top of the key, and with um, Wendell Carter being lost underneath the twin tower effect of one big guy looking for the other wasn't happening. Bagley was out of place on offense, and therefore you really didn't know um, what was going to happen. So Grayson just tried to pick up the slack by shooting, and in the first uh, couple of minutes of the game, it looked as if he was off to the races, but he finished 4 for 15 from three-point range. They shot a combined 28% from three-point range. And right down the stretch, one of my points, and this is, I'm sorry to dump on Trey Duval once again, but one of my points was he is not a clutch free throw shooter. He had a chance but a one-on-one towards the very end of the game. He missed the front end, and that was a very costly mistake for them. Duke would have been up. And unfortunately, that opened the door again for... Um, the Virginia Tech Hokies, and this is, you know, this is going to be a uh, a problem for Duke as they now certainly get to get tested Saturday when North Carolina comes to Cameron for the home and home series, which North Carolina won in North Carolina, and I'll tell you, Joel Berry at point guard. Even though they're going to be in front of the Cameron Crazies, is going to be able to play probably a big game for them. And he certainly is going to be motivated. And we always know the Duke uh, North Carolina games are always um, terrific matchups. Um, and then we're off to the ACC tournament. And if, they, if Duke had won today, they would have gotten a double bye. That did not happen. So we'll have to see what happens on Saturday. Um, when Duke faces off with North Carolina, it will be Grayson's senior night, so expect him to try to have a big game. This is his last game in a Duke uniform in front of the Cameron Crazies. So I'm JD. We miss you, Jack. This is Dealing with the Devils. We'll speak to you on Saturday night.